So I want to show you something that I think is kind of cool, kind of exciting. Um, it's a new beta feature that ChatGPT has out, and it allows you to train or create custom GPTs. Um, and so what that means is you can make kind of your own flavor of ChatGPT or chatbot that fits a very specific purpose. And why is this useful, especially to people like me, professors? Well, um, there are reports that are showing that students are substantially outpacing professors in their usage of AI, right? They're taking the tools and they're using them in whatever way they may be using them. And I've found personally in my classes, they've still been using them pretty productively. Um, but what it allows us to do is, uh, is we can create uh, GPTs specifically for assignments or specifically for classes that we provide resources for so that their answers um, that are generated by the bot are kind of consistent with the language that you want to be using in your class. Um, so I think it's a very useful thing. Um, it kind of helps ensure that students aren't using the tools in a way that might not be best for their education. You can actually um, craft the GPT to um, kind of employ the Socratic method and ask questions and not directly give answers, um, which can be super duper helpful. And also, um, right, it's a, a resource that can, um, especially if you have uh, large classes, it can be a resource to kind of help um, bring down your load um, in terms of answering questions and things like that. So I've actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is, I already went through and configured one, um, and I'll, just because it takes a little while, um, I'll show you kind of the result in the initial configuration, and then I'll show you how to configure one from scratch. So, um, let me head over to my monitor here. So what I did is um, for my class EE 2174, I have a project where they need to create, um, they need to fix this secded code word. It's nothing super special. You don't need to understand much about it to understand what I'm doing. Um, and so it has a name, a basic description, and you can see over to the right, there's a preview of what it looks like. And then there's some instructions and those instructions range from you know um, use use the details from some of the documents that I've uploaded so I uploaded um, the the help resource for um, the the tool that they're actually doing the project in but I also uploaded the uh, uh, the specifications for the project and it might even be wise to upload a solution this one uh, it's not a plain text solution or anything that would be easily interpretable by ChatGPT. Um, but you can also see in this description things like, I can zoom in just a little bit. You can see things like uh, its persona, make sure it has a friendly professor per persona, um, and encourage students to think critically, things like that. Um, and another um, handy thing is just some basic questions. Uh, it'll it will automatically populate these, or you can go through and change them as you want. Um, so like explain the difference between the incoming bits, you know, why are my wires red? That's a thing that students ask quite frequently. Um, and like I said, I can also upload these documents. You can have quite a few documents in there. I have noticed that you can't put too large of a document in there, um, but it will still reference it if needed. Um, another thing I haven't quite messed with, but is the ability to have a code interpreter. Um, and so this might be super useful if, um, if you're throwing in some sort of code and, or if, this, if you're expecting your students to be able to throw in code and ask questions about it and how it might relate to your project. Um, and so this is, this is excellent. Um, let me kind of show you how this might work. Uh, and also for reference, I should pull up, um, right, the, the documents that I gave it, uh, like here's the here's the project two document, and I might I might want to know uh, what do all the bits mean? What do all the bits mean in here? That might be a student. That might be something that a student might ask. What do the uh, well? Here, one of the suggested questions actually that I chose is the difference between the incoming bits. So I'm going to click that and see what it says. It's going to think for a second. Um, so when it's searching its knowledge, it's also looking through some of the documents that I gave it, um, and so um, so it's it's actually looking from the from the project manual there, um, and let, let's see what it says. 
Yeah, you're handled with, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So there's all the bits, D12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way to C0. And it's basically reiterating, if I were to zoom out, that would probably look a little bit better. Um, but it's going, no, not quite. But it's going through and reiterating things. Um, it's also saying um, the sec bits, the single error correction bits are calculated off of 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, um, and 3. Uh, which you can actually see um, the sec bits are, uh, they're calculated off D12, 11, 10, 9, uh, 7, so on and so forth. It's not super important. All I can say is that this is actually reasonably accurate. Um, and it's giving them a little bit more um, on what their task is going to be. Um, and so this is, this is an okay answer. Uh, another Another question is uh, that, that's, that I get quite frequently is why oh, oops why are some of my wires red? All right, so some of the wires are red, and this is saying um, this is talking about Logisim, uh, and it, it, it's 100% true. If you have two signals that are connected to each other um, that that aren't connected in a proper way. Uh, that'll be a conflicting signal and that'll be red. Uh, and so, right, so checking connections, um, finding where the conflicts are, all super good advice. Now, of course, it is debatable um, on, right, if this is really the best way, but the fact of the matter is that um, students are going to be using these tools, right, we know they already are using them, and so, um, because you might say, well, why don't they just use the PDFs? Well, that, that's, that's a valid thing. And that may be the mode that some students use, but this is just adding a new way um, for students to interface with your projects or your class or your um, homework assignments or anything along those lines. Um, and it's also uh, you know, useful for other accessibility things like um, ChatGPT can generate text that's easier um, to read if you're dyslexic, things like that. And so just the accessibility portion is also invaluable. Um, so I think it's something that's super worth looking into. Um, so that's kind of the end of like the quick demo video, but now I'll, I'll, show, you, um, I'll show you how I actually went about making this, um, just so you can see. So um, it is for ChatGPT4, so it is the paid version. But if you go into Explore, and you can um, click Create a GPT. And so I'm going to, it's asking what I want to make. So I'm going to just do the same prompt again. So I want to create a GPT that helps my EE2174 students uh, by answering their questions on Project 2 about SecDead and also helps them debug Logisim problems. All right, and so see, you know, it could interpret that it meant single error correction, dual error detection. It wants the name Circuit Helper. I'm not super crazy about that name, so let's just call it um, Project 2 Help Bot. There we go, and there's its new name. It's going to update. And now it's generating a profile picture. Um, and for the sake of, uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to um, refute this, um, but I could easily, uh, actually that one's pretty cute. Uh, I like that one. Um, but I could say, you know, I want it to be a little bit more pixel art theme, or I want it to look like a real human, or I want it to describe myself and be like, Hey, have a have a dude wearing a Stormy Cromer and hat and whatever. But no, I think this is this is good enough. So I'm gonna say, yep. Okay, we gotta let it finish talking. Um, yeah, let's keep it. So you can see it's building this preview over on the right, um, and so now it's asking um, to ensure the effective. Uh, to ensure it effectively assists your 2174 students, what specific topics related to SecDed and LogiSim should it focus on? So it should focus 
on debugging, ask the students um, what their symptoms are and help lead them towards solutions. Don't just give answers. So now it's going to go through and adjust a little bit. So this is why I, um, I uh, chose to leave this toward the end because it does take some time. Um, so now it's asking if there's anything that it should avoid. Um, so yeah, I, don't be too wordy. Keep things brief, concise, and helpful. Now it's asking how do I want to interact with the students. Um, it should be kind and encouraging. Uh, let the students know that um, maybe some along the lines of their efforts are worthwhile. Um, yeah, so it's, it's generating a bunch of crap here for me. So, um, yeah, maybe include a husky joke from time to time. Um, all of those prompts that they gave me look good. Perhaps add one about wire colors. There we go. All right. So we kind of uh, addressed all these things here. And let it do its thing. All right. All right, and so now you can see um, these prompts had popped up, and now it's essentially ready, except for there's a big step that we missed. I want to give you some documents to help tune your advice. And I'm just going to go through, and I'm going to upload my documents. I haven't seen, I know you can only upload 10 at a time. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see um, how this scales when we uh, want to do, like an, if I try to do an entire class, I want to upload all my material in there. Um, it's an experiment I'm going to try, but I haven't tried yet. Um, anyways, I'm going to run this, and then it's, it's going to have to go through there and parse, right? So um, just for example, my, my document looks like this. Um, there's a couple pictures in there, which isn't super good um, because, you know, it can't really parse pictures. And so um, you do want to think about your accessibility of your document, just also just in terms of um, accessibility. Um, but having things like this, like my FAQ in here, um, that's probably handy um, for its learning. Um, or you can see, I just went to the website for Logisim, the tool that the students are using, and I basically had it... Um, print the, get a PDF of the entire website. Um, and that just gives um, a bunch of really good, nice, um, direct device or uh, advice. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we might be in decent shape. Now, if I go back to configure um, all of these, uh, you can see my files in there, right? And I can um, allow for web browsing, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so I think we're good. Let's, uh, let's try a really uh, basic question here that a student might ask is, why is my output only question marks, right? It's a, like if a student asked me that, I would have to like 
uh, dig in and say, uh, you know, why why is it only question marks? Have you have you looked at X module? Have you looked at Y module? So let's see how decent it is. So it's thinking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So that <laughs> that is totally true. If they did the assignment wrong, right? If they did the assignment wrong. Um, or if there are still errors, because that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be correcting errors in, in the script. Um, these are all very, very good recommendations. This, this right here is a, um, a super common problem, actually, this decoder and um, wire usage. Um, it's, uh, it's actually, <clears throat> if, I, if I go over to my, uh, the decoder wiring, I specifically have a section on wiring the decoder because students have screwed it up in the past and so it's highlighting that. Um, and yeah, as you can see also some words of encouragement. Remember debugging is like trying to find a needle in the haystack, it requires patience. You've got the little husky footprints there. So um, I, I personally, uh, I, I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna try rolling this out, maybe not in a, this semester, but next semester and just get some feedback and see what students think about it. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was a cool thing to share. Um, personally, I think this could be really impactful for pedagogy and stuff like that, but we'll see.